Okay, thank you, Yan Yan. That was very interesting results. Uh, I have to apologize a little bit for the quality of my voice. I'm working with a sore throat, so if I uh, occasionally reach over for a, a cup of uh, hot lemon uh, water, uh, they, you'll know what I'm doing and why. Uh, this uh, survey was uh, conducted in uh, about February this year, most of it. Uh, we had about 1,002 cases uh, of completed uh, uh, surveys. Uh, at the 95% uh, confidence interval, uh, you can look at these results as being reliable 95% uh, of the time uh, between plus or minus uh, three points. Uh, we rounded all the results uh, based on the um, recommendations from the AAPOR, the American Association of Public Opinion Research, and the WAPOR, the World Association of Public Opinion Research. So that's why all of our numbers are rounded off. Okay, first slide. Now, in this uh, survey, uh, we've tried to get a better handle on not just what people know, but also about the sources of behavior, how we can understand why people do or don't do uh, the things regarding uh, uh, energy. Uh, what we're doing today in our first presentation here with you, and you're, you're quite an interesting group, uh, you get to go first, and uh, so we get to experiment a bit with you uh, as well. Uh, we're, we're focusing on these five aspects, uh, and our slides are color-coded for these aspects, so you can follow along and keep track of what we're doing. Now, first, first test, think about knowledge. What do people actually know, or at least think they know, about the various aspects of energy? Uh, then the first step has to do with discussion. Do, do people actually talk about these things? Uh, with whom do they talk about these things? Uh, and does it get up the ladder? Uh, do we have a lot of discussion, for example, among the family and friends, but it doesn't get up to legislative level or up to the government level. So the government never really quite knows what we're talking about, and we wonder why the government doesn't know what we're talking about. Uh, then, of course, concern, uh, which is worry and w what people are uh, most concerned about when it comes to various aspects of uh, energy generation in Hong uh, The concern about the energy supply is more of a, uh, an elite uh, perspective in some ways. Um, because most people, when they flip the switch, they think the light should come on. <laughs> They're not too worried uh, about uh, where their energy comes from until they flip that switch and the lights don't come on. And they were built in, uh, more concerned about things because every understand uh, what these things, uh, the effect they have. Next slide. Right, so this is our knowledge question. Um, and some of you may have noticed that there's slightly different phrasing in some of these questions. Uh, this is the general question uh, about the overall power contribution of these six types of energy bank. Uh, we gave very broad categories uh, of response to try to give people a chance to uh, get within a range uh, of the correct responses. So next. And you can see in that first slide, and you can compare this with uh, how you did, and you guys did much better, as you might expect, uh, from an audience that was more focused on energy. Uh, in this case, uh, you, you know that in terms of the overall energy mix, uh, nuclear gives about 23% or so, which is about 25% in our scale. Uh, and you find that that gets the lowest amount of people actually getting that percentage right. All right, so in terms of understanding, for example, nuclear's contribution or coal's contribution, okay, people are pretty far off uh, the, the, the scale in terms of understanding the actual accurate amount uh, that is being contributed to our overall energy mix by these forms of power. Uh, and as you can see, we just, we, we have a majority, it's a small majority, uh, everybody understands pretty much that we don't get much from wind or solar photovoltaic uh, or solar hot water. Uh, the interesting thing about solar hot water, of course, everybody knows, is there's very little data collected on it. Next. And this gives you the uh, wrong answers, the most popular ones, uh, the ones that uh, people gave. And you can see that there's quite a big difference between the 13% who got it right on nuclear, for example, 
uh, and the 21% uh, who thought that very little to none uh, was what nuclear contributed. So there's a pretty significant block of folks in Hong Kong uh, who are quite uninformed uh, about our uh, energy mix. Next slide. Now, th this is a trickier question, and some of you may already recognize um, that it is. How much of Hong Kong's energy would you say is generated inside Hong Kong's energy by following, or territory by following? And most of you already know that when it comes to nuclear, the answer is none. Uh, Daya Bay is outside Hong Kong, um, so none of our uh, electrical power that comes from nuclear energy uh, is actually generated inside uh, Hong Kong. Uh, and most people know this, 47%, that it's not a majority, uh, but it's significantly better than we might have uh, expected. Okay. Next slide. Uh, in terms of <clears throat> looking, excuse me, at trust uh, that people have in various information sources, we also look uh, at, and in the full report, we'll be putting out uh, the information about uh, the sources people use. And most people, by the way, tended to use uh, television, uh, radio, and now, in quite a contrast to a survey we did in 2001, uh, the internet. The internet's moved way up the scale there. And in terms of trust, it's about the same as it was in 2001. Uh, most people saying they trust a great deal of uh, school and universities or green groups. Um, and then if you add some trust in, uh, you can see that there's pretty much a, a, a similar amount, uh, except for green groups, uh, which stand out a bit more. So this gives, uh, as I think um, Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility uh, for green groups. And I'm sure we have a lot of representatives in the audience. Uh, a lot of people are giving you a lot of credibility. And so it's very important to make sure that our um, statements are backed up with as much evidence as we can get. And that's uh, one of the purposes of the survey. Next slide. Okay, we're trying to understand here um, in looking at these sources uh, of information that people use in terms of the internet and TV and radio. And there's quite a number of other sources as well. Um, and in this case, thank you, uh, those folks who do not use uh, the internet or do not use very much, uh, you can see that their percentage of discussing with family or discussing with friends is lower than the other groups. So we can have the next arrows coming down. And the next most active group you can see are people who use, and we've got different hours in the note, because on the internet, if you're using it more than about seven, eight hours a week, you're way up the scale in terms of frequency of use, uh, given the pattern of use inside Hong Kong. Uh, whereas with television or radio, if you're listening at around 10, 12 hours a week, you're actually a fairly modest uh, uh, listener. Uh, in fact, to become a real junkie user of radio and television has to be around 20 hours plus. And we had some people who obviously uh, either don't sleep or sleep with the radio and TV on because they said they were listening uh, to radio or TV 90 hours plus a week. Um, so these folks who use the, 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 the media, one to six hours, two to 10 hours, which is a moderate amount, applies to most folks. Uh, this is about the level for, for the, the median amount of people. Uh, you can see the results here, 42% discussing with family for the internet, 49% uh, who discuss uh, with friends uh, for TV and radio. Next. And then you can see our, our so-called heavy users, seven hours plus, uh, 11 hours plus uh, for radio and television. Um, and the interesting thing here is that the heavy users of the internet seem to be more activists. This uh, comes across in quite a lot of the survey. Uh, folks who use the internet more um, are very different from folks who use radio and TV more. Uh, there must be some truth to the couch potato uh, thing <laughs> when it comes to uh, watching television. Uh, watching more of it seems to tend to passive, more passivity. Uh, whereas the internet seems to be more of an activist and engaged thing. And the questions we ask related to using the internet for current affairs uh, and information about the environment. So this is not just general overall listening. This is people who are my class. 
fly as, as junkies, in this case, news junkies, radio junkies, so people who are really interested in information. Thank you. Next slide. And this uh, continues that same uh, set of questions. And now we're going up the scale, looking at media, LegCo, government officials, um, in terms of these various forms of media. So we can get our little arrows coming down. And the people who do the least, you can see also, are the least uh, willing to discuss with these other groups. What's really interesting uh, is uh, in looking at comparing, uh, for example, the folks who use the internet lease, the folks who use television radio lease, discussing with government officials, it seems that there's real reluctance to simply talk to government officials uh, out of what people might feel is an uninformed perspective. So people who don't spend much time uh, with the media uh, examining these things also don't talk that much about it. Uh, in general, not as much with family and friends, uh, but a lot, much less, uh, whenever we get up uh, to the, uh, you might say, the more official, the more representative levels. Right? Next, arrows. And there's our middle uh, range uh, users. Uh, you can see there's a significant uh, increase in willing to discuss, for example, with the media uh, and discuss with government officials and among folks with the internet. Uh, the internet, by and large, seems to have a stronger effect uh, than watching television or radio. Next. And there's our heavy junkie users, and you can see there's a considerable difference uh, between the folks now who are uh, using the internet uh, versus folks who are heavy users, uh, again, of television. Though this time, they don't quite tail off as much uh, in terms of very heavy users uh, at the very top end. Uh, they're, they're 8 9%. It's about the same, not, 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 not significant change there. Uh, there is, of course, with the Internet about discussing with government officials uh, on the, the, the higher end. The heavier users definitely are more active in talking with them. Okay, next slide. Uh, this gets into the uh, serious uh, and interesting area where the, one of the theories we had in designing the questionnaire uh, was assuming that bill payers, people who actually pay the bills, would be more conscious of, uh, for example, the cost of energy. They would know more about energy, about energy use patterns. Uh, that they would tend to be, for example, more frequent readers of the energy use labels. Uh, and by and large, in most cases, that turned out to, to be the case. So we've got a a pretty good understanding of the difference between people who pay the bills and people who don't. Um, and then also, you know, a very interesting case of drivers. Uh, there's only about 14% of the respondents uh, who said they drive a, a car privately uh, for any uh, uh, frequency. Okay, so we have a fair number of people who don't drive for once or twice a month. Uh, only about uh, seven or eight uh, percent of the overall sample um, say they drive uh, almost daily. Okay, and these uh, drivers seem to be far more activist, far more sensitive uh, to many aspects of energy use and energy costs and the environment uh, than you would have uh, expected, uh, given their similarities and differences on other variables that usually affects these things. Uh, for example, uh, income, education, experience overseas, and so forth. When you take all those things out, uh, there is a significant difference that driving uh, actually makes. Next slide. Uh, whenever you look at these folks, you can see the difference here uh, on this slide uh, between bill payers and non-bill payers, for example. Uh, they're, they're more likely uh, to talk to legislative members. They're more likely to talk to government officials. Uh, drivers, surprisingly enough, are more likely also to be involved at these higher levels. Uh, if some of you are wondering how it is sometimes that uh, uh, the automobiles and automobile association and the automobile lobby seems to have uh, an inordinate or seem seemingly disproportionate degree of influence, in part, here's your answer. All right, next slide. Okay, th this is a question about uh, uh, effectively self-assessment uh, about whether they think they know enough to make a judgment, okay? And uh, this gives us some very interesting results. Uh, as you can see, the coal, coal is, is of the three main power sources. Uh, coal is the one source that most people feel like they know pretty much what the um, 
uh, implications that the two are, the health effects and accident uh, effects are. Uh, solar, electric, and wind, we, we find actually people uh, know less te technologically about these things, but they feel they know more about them in terms of their effects on health or accidents. Uh, as, uh, uh, as some folks have said in the past, we've never had a wind spill uh, that caused massive uh, environmental damage, like we've had oil spills, for example, in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, next. And in this case, what we are com comparing are these uh, levels of knowledge uh, with the levels of concern people have uh, about these health effects of nuclear power, for example. Okay, so those folks who are very worried, okay, very worried about the health effects to accident uh, effects of nuclear power. Whenever you compare the two columns, yes, they know about it, but no, they don't. There's really very little difference between people who say they don't know and people who say they do know and the folks who say they're very worried, which tells us that there's a lot of people who are very worried about nuclear power, but it's not coming from some real basic knowledge, uh, even the self-assessed knowledge. Uh, and when you run that scale down, the folks who are somewhat worried, again, pretty close, not very worried, you begin to get this um, uh, unsettling feeling that people are making, at least their emotions, uh, are stepping in and not being based on even a self-assessed uh, basis of understanding, uh, of knowledge. Uh, people are reacting almost instinctively. And the question, of course, to social scientists is, well, what is driving that? What, what, are, we, what are we getting here? All right, next slide. Uh, in this case, we're looking at coal, okay? And with coal, uh, not only is the, the very worried amount lower, uh, but you can also see that those people who are very worried, um, again, you've got the same kind of result, uh, not quite as announced as with nuclear, but nevertheless, there it is again, uh, people who say they don't know and people who say they do know being much more closely together than you might think in terms of portions of the very worried. Uh, same thing with the somewhat worried, and so forth. Uh, these, these are some very interesting slides in terms of trying to figure out uh, how, for example, to run an information campaign uh, to help folks out. Okay, next slide. Right, this is a very interesting one in terms of concern uh, about Hong Kong's energy supply. This is one that uh, you folks, most of you as, as elites, uh, this would bother you a lot more. And as you can see, uh, for most folks, when they look across the various types of energy, the majority in almost every case is it's either none or not much. Okay. For electricity, 50% uh, none, 20% uh, not much. Okay, so this, it's a very small proportion of people who say they have a great deal of concern about any of these uh, forms of energy. Uh, those of us who have a uh, more informed background on this, uh, uh, certainly uh, these are very challenging results. Next slide. Right, in this case, whenever we run the various demographics and so forth um, and try to see if there's any association with the demographic variables and these concern levels about all these different other kinds of energy, we actually find that in most cases there's no association. There doesn't seem to be any levers there uh, in terms of understanding why people have or don't have concerns about various forms of energy. The ones that do come out are the folks who are concerned about energy for private transport. Uh, and those, this again, uh, a lot of this has to do with the uh, drivers. Um, drivers, again, seem to be this kind of special group uh, in Hong Kong uh, and folks who are in families who have drivers. Um, so in this uh, uh, slide, uh, you have the level of concern for example, a great deal uh, and whether or not they bought a more efficient uh, automobile. And what's really interesting about this one is that the levels of concern and whether or not they bought a more efficient automobile seems so disconnected. I mean, the people who had a great deal of concern, for example, about 9% of them have bought a more efficient automobile. People who said they don't know about private transport energy, whether they're concerned or not, about 8% of them bought a more efficient automobile. 
So in many ways, uh, the best way I think to interpret this slide is that concern about others, concern about the overall energy supply into Hong Kong is really not much of a factor when it comes to people uh, buying more energy efficient automobile. So any sort of campaign that was oriented um, towards trying to persuade people to do their part to contribute to Hong Kong's um, uh, energy uh, independence or Hong Kong's ability to uh, deliver the goods, uh, I don't think it would seem to have much effect. Next slide. Uh, this one is <clears throat> even more puzzling <laughs> uh, because we find that drivers, when it comes to light bulbs, uh, energy saving light bulbs for some reason, um, drivers are the least likely to have changed their light bulbs to more energy saving light bulb. Uh, they show a lot more interest in other areas, uh, but when it comes, for some reason, when it comes to light bulbs, I don't know if this is a Taido Mafan issue for drivers, uh, uh, but apparently this is not something they're that much concerned about, uh, as, as you can see here. Uh, next slide. Uh, power strips, uh, interestingly enough, um, you get a little more uh, response from folks who are worried about it. Uh, but again, the variation is not large. And, and, and uh, again, I want to remind you that looking across all the different variables, it's only the private transport sector that actually sticks out any at all. So this association is, is fairly weak, all right? So when it comes for concern about Hong Kong's energy supply, which is something you were very concerned about, it doesn't seem to be something that really affects the behaviors, the attitudes of a lot of people in Hong Kong. So we have to really think about uh, how, how we think and how we communicate uh, with other folks uh, in this area in terms of being concerned about the overall energy mix and so forth. And that gets us into our next set, next slide. And again, you can see the same thing here. Uh, not much difference between those who have bought or could, would consider buying uh, of energy efficient plant and those who would not. Next. All right, and now we begin to get this uh, question of affordability. Uh, this is a, a, an interesting bottom line uh, question where we begin to see uh, very interesting effects to do. Uh, note that the people who are very worried about paying their energy bills are less likely to have read always or sometimes read energy use labels uh, than folks who are worried at lower levels. Uh, what we find in this, in this slide, and it comes through in a number of places in the survey, is that people who are very worried about affordability seem to be almost frozen in their ability to do things. They seem to not want to know as much, and they seem, since they feel like they can't make any actions, they may as well not know about it or pay attention to it. So the folks who are really poor or really pressed in terms of paying for energy, uh, those are the very folks, of course, who would be most helped by changing light bulbs, but those are the folks who are, in some ways, much less likely to do so, precisely because their depth of poverty seems to create this uh, barrier uh, to movement. They, they, they simply are trying to struggle to survive from day to day. So the idea of saving energy over the next year, two years, or five years is just in, almost inconceivable to them. Next slide. Uh, and, and again, you can compare your responses um, uh, as a lead uh, to the general public's responses. Uh, and in terms of top priority, you can see safety and environmental effects are, are, are number one and number two for most people. Uh, much less concerned about reliability and security and even affordability, interestingly enough, uh, is down the scale. Next slide. Now this is the reverse, again, just as you, you guys had, uh, the least priority one. Uh, the interesting thing uh, here is that you have uh, such a high proportion for affordability and such a low proportion, again, on safety, uh, the least priority, which basically reinforces the results we've gotten that people really want safety and environmental effects really focused on. Now, of course, what that means as well is that if you really want to begin to affect people's uh, behaviors, besides cost, besides affordability, uh, personal affordability, you don't want to go talking about uh, uh, Hong Kong's affordability of things. They're, they're not concerned about that so much. 
its safety and environmental effects. And the argument, yes, we can afford this, that might work. Um, will it affect your bills? There's a portion of who are very sensitive to that. Uh, other people, if they get the right kind of choices uh, laid out to them, I think they very much are going to say yes, uh, pay more uh, for safety and environmental uh, effects uh, is worth it. Okay, next.